What well, presenters, welcome back. How good is SGA from the LKC Thunder, NBA's newest superstar? Let's go. Thinking basketball. Alexander is currently fourth in the NBA in scoring, averaging nearly 31 a game at the midway point of the season. And he fourth in the game. Um, he has a tremendous patience in the paint, great body control, great pivot work, and a tremendous touch right or left around the paint. So let's see what they talk about. And he's in a trashy rebuilding team has taken a leap this year that has people wondering just how good he is right now Poke. over the last three seasons shea has been the unofficial driving king of the nba finishing first in drives per game according to tracking he has data. sneaky bounce one of the reasons for that is and that very sneaky years, strength he's added a ton of strength filling into his frame and now he uses that extra size to control defenders or bounce right off of them. He's stronger in his lower body. When I talk about too, decelerating, you need to learn how to and decelerate now he uses better. That extra size to and then when you're strong and small, it's about technique where you bump them. It's not how hard you bump them, where you bump them, the angle at which you bump them. If you've ever taken any karate classes or technique driven stuff, right? Leverage, bang, the timing. Right off of He's stronger in his lower body too, which means he's more explosive vertically, and he has better burst off one leg on his change of pace moves. He drives off that back leg into space, then elongates his strides to finish with the left. Because he's pretty long in the limbs, Gildas Alexander is a prolific Euro stepper, ball faking mid stride here as he jumps off the wrong leg, and these kinds of moves require sturdiness and a ton of balance. Sturdiness. For instance, his spin moves cover a ton of ground now, whereas a few years ago, that was a more stationary spin just to reposition himself and start a drive. No. He's also quite slippery and creative at the I don't believe that. This, ago, this does not make any sense. That was a more sense. stationary sturdiness and a ton of balance. For instance, no, this is called one leg balanced. When you're strong at AF, you can control your step. So he can control all his speed and momentum on one leg here and then redirect where he wants to jump by where he wants to place that right leg. When you have tremendous amount of strength, you have so much time to adjust and think. Um, it's a matter of milliseconds. But when your body is under control, when your ankles and hips work the way they should. spin just to reposition himself and start a right here he shows the ability to do it right there with that jump creative at the rim blasting through contact and let's not forget before somehow slithering this under the defense <clears throat> with his off hand and let's not forget that uh, he carries the ball on every single play creative at the rim blasting through right here contact. controlling there not minding the contact because he initiates if he flails up it looks like they're going to call a foul if they don't he gets the advantage somehow, right Right, left plant. I talk about the six jump plants, right? He jumps, he twists, right? He puts that foot in front. Now he protects his body. He can take the collision, sneaks one pass. With his off hand. Only six players in the league average 20 drives per 36 minutes. So Shane's beautiful slide there. I talk about the defense with his off hand. Only six players in the league. Dorito, banana, right? Look at this. Right, that's the position you need to be in, boys and girls. Stop dribbling with your chest up. That's not what you do when you drive. You see that chest down, so you should be doing more RDOs. Your body should be turned as you drive. Do you see that? Look how low his shoulders are. Everybody's talking about, oh yeah, get your shoulders on. Lean over at your waist. Do more back extensions. Work on your hamstrings. 20 drives. Okay, so then here he's tall, right? And then he can just Euro pass slide. Boom. Look so at how much he twists and contorts his body. Are you guys doing twists hand. and rotations in your workout, or are you just doing dummy uh, barbell squats and leg presses? Players in the league, even just vertical, <laughs> stationary so walking lunges. Not great for basketball. It's okay. And only Luka Doncic and it's okay, but not great. Williamson are more efficient among the highest volume penetrators. Obviously, Shea has a nice handle, and I love this change of pace he uses between his legs, where he explodes mid-dribble to catch defenders off guard. 
the between the legs is designed to relax the change of pace he uses between his legs. <sighs> you, you know this guy's smart. This thinking basketball guy is smart, but he's not a basketball he player. Like this is a drop cross, and then he switches his feet. It's a foot switch between a leg, and then look, he drops low again. Catch defenders off guard. The ability to jump the off the right or left. Right here, he's skipping. This is changing a guy's rhythm, so he doesn't know how to slide properly. Now, right here, he's already exposed. <laughs> like, Fender. just by where his foot is, just by changing this stupid skip when you walk to the left. To catch defenders off guard. Here, look, he's managing space. You gotta learn how to manage space. Skip, pause, skip, pause, right? So now Anthony Edwards already overplayed the, the left. So now he's already exposed. So you just go between the legs. It's so easy. And he doesn't go right away because Anthony Edwards is a terrible defender, but also very athletic. So he does a delay between the legs. He doesn't go till it touches his hands, which is different from the previous one. See, ball touches and then he goes. Let's go back. Among the highest volume. This one, he slides through and then he goes on the bounce. So when he skips, right, boom, then he goes because he beats him on the exchange. He knows he's already mid skip. He knows uh, who's that? Bruce Brown is mid mid slide. To catch defenders off guard. It's a big difference. Is designed to relax the defender, and he goes as the ball is coming back to that right hand, and that's yet another left-handed finish. His increased burst from a standstill makes this move work, and this time it's great body control and a floater. He'll just it's not a great burst. His increased burst from a standstill makes this move. This this is not a good burst. This is when I talk about a banana. This is a banana when he's up here. So this is not a good burst. Work. Okay, th what makes this work is he lowers on the second step, right? And then he knows he's stronger than this guy, so he bumps into his body right there. That's what makes it work. So now he's into the paint, and he knows he's bigger and stronger. He's just going to go right, left, shoot it. Great body control and a, a floater. It's not Gildas burst. Alexander is also a prolific mid-range scorer, taking about half of all his shots between 4 and 15 feet. That's sick. Basket. His size and added strength also help him carve out shots around the paint like this. And he's jumped up right to shoulder, left shoulder. 91% from the free throw line this year. Okay, so it's spinning and over the right shoulder. First came in the league, his shot looks smoother and tighter to me from his feet up to the release. With his elbow tucked in more, and he's quicker to bring the ball to his shooting pocket instead of moving it across his body. He also hops around in short spaces like a pogo stick to create separation, bursting away instead of moving. Boys and girls, you can change your jump shot as you get into the NBA. Because as you get stronger, your legs get stronger, your arms get bigger, your shoulder might get in the way, things uh, people don't understand if you've never played. You adjust your shot. Especially as you start playing and you figure out what starts working, you better change the way you shoot. And he's quicker to bring the ball to his shooting pocket instead of moving it across his body. He also hops around in short spaces like right here, right? This is side control. This is Pogo sliding in, punking that dude. Creates separation. Patience getting Bursting getting a shot off. Away from defenders by moving backwards or sideways to find cleaner looks. That's and just hanging around Chris Paul, least, studying tape, a great coach. Really well. And even though his feet fly everywhere here, his upper body mechanics stay the same. Oh, why do you flail your legs like that to regain your balance? That's all it is. You're controlling your, your flight path. When you put everything... So he's balanced. Accelerates really well. And even because he though wants to land these... Everywhere he Good lord. When you jump with your feet split like this, you stop your momentum. You go more up and down. You're more balanced like this. His upper body mechanics. Because his momentum is going forward. If he kept his knees going, both knees going forward, he would keep drifting forward. If he kept them flat, his whole body would momentum would go forward. Same. When you put everything together, it explains. So if you go in full blast like this, feet fly ever with both your feet pointing straight you're typically gonna go flying forward. How is he getting his separation? Stop separation. So if 
He jumps here and keeps floating forward. It's going to get blocked. So he splits his legs. And um, someone like me has to teach that to you. Or you're just very intuitive in the way you jumped. Or you just played a lot, a lot, a lot of sports. His upper body mechanics stay the same. When you put everything together, it explains why he's averaging 31 a night. He's in the middle of the floor, explodes mid-dribble, takes the contact, spots the help defender, so he stops on a dime for a step back, but he's crafty enough to send RJ Barrett to up fake school for the and one. Brilliant. He'll also throw a little post-up game at you sometimes, going to a fade away over either shoulder. SGA is nice, man. He has the ability to jump, like I said, the six jump types. I haven't seen the, the hops yet, but I've seen it. Um, so left foot only, right foot only, left right, left right, uh, right left. He has the ability to turn over either shoulder. We're using his size to set up those creative finishes. He's going to have to work on his three-point game. Of course, all that scoring in the middle of the court opens up scoring opportunities for teammates. And Shea's paint touches set up a bunch of drive and kicks out to three-point shooters. But this is where things get interesting, because I would describe him as a score-first passer, meaning he's trying to set up his shot first, and then the passes are a secondary decision. This is its own describe him as a... Right, so we have score, uh, score playmaker, sniper, slasher, defender, and entertainer. Score first passer. Score first passer. He might just be a scorer. Meaning he's trying to set up his shot first. Well, he wants him to pass it back to that dude? That's going to be stolen. Why the hell would you want to pass it back to that dude? How are you going to do it? Behind the back with the left? Are you going to pivot it, front pivot and, and whip it around with the right? Uh, that's going to be a steal. The open pass right now would be to this wing spot, um, to whoever number 11 is. And then the passes are a secondary decision. This is its own type of heliocentrism. So I think that's Jackson Hayes. Pressure, so he might, he's trying to set up he might get difficulties with long athletic guys, but... First. And then the passes are a secondary. Not very many of those guys in the league. Decision. This is its own type of heliocentrism, where Shea operates in his office, the corner skip is already open, and if he can't find the right shot, then he looks to play man. <clears throat> Take centrism, where Shea operates in his office, mm. the corner skip is already open. That ain't open, because he's not super tall. He has to jump over and pass over Jeff Green. Open. So it's going to be a slow pass. It's not open. That's what he has to get. He has to pump Jeff Green to get to the other side, and now it's open. Then he looks to playmake. Take nope. this play, Don't where agree. I think the best playmakers hit one of the three point shooters right now, but Shea instead looks to Euro step around defenders, then kicks it out, and that allows a defender to eliminate the quarter three and it turns into a weird 28-footer. That's not bad. This is not bad. You gotta put more pressure on the D. Take this play, where I think the best playmakers hit one of the three-point shooters right now. If you throw it now, it's too early because n none of these guys have committed. Ow. Nobody's committed. That's a that's a decent closeout. But and then you got two guys in the paint, so if he drives, then the, you got help. Ed looks to Euro step around the paint. <clears throat> Then kicks it out. And the better play would have kept doing exactly what he did and dumped it off to this dude, the big man to dunk. That allows a defender to eliminate the corner uh, to number three, seventeen. And it turns into a weird or thirty-seven footer. I describe Shea as a pretty good passer. He likes this live dribble pocket pass that can lead to good offense, and his ability to snap passes off the bounce is definitely a nice little asset as a playmaker. He doesn't really probe around, look. He's offense. a little bit nonchalant and with some of these pocket passes. I mean, it's fine. Is as long as it gets there. Asset as a playmaker. He doesn't really probe around, looking to manipulate defenders. That slick dribbling collapses the defense. But instead of thinking about one of these cutters, he hits the basic kick out instead. His live dribble trigger. <laughs> basic isn't bad, boys defense. and girls. But instead of thinking about one of these cutters. He hits the basic. That's the longer closeout for Siakam. That's probably the better stand. shooter. His live dribble trigger means he can react to passing windows quickly when he sees them, snapping off the head beauty to a cutter. 
And I love the idea That's a nice left-handed pass. Where he sees Ludor diving and uses the dribble to try to squeeze it in, but it's a little off the mark. Lobs he's not a good passer so it's very hard to teach vision um you can teach reads and stuff like that but it's the vision to see plays ahead of stuff like that so he's definitely not like a playmaker is it in? like right here would have been a good opportunity to fake it to dort and then kick it to giddy but that's a little off the mark lobs or passes <clears throat> over the top aren't a huge part of his game right now the lob is open for a while here, and after up faking, he finally finds the dunk. So this Shea centric offense creates plenty of yeah. shots for teammates. It's a little late. But all Timing passes isn't the same, and that's a subtle but important factor to consider when playing smarter and faster defenses in the playoffs. Yeah. One clear area he can improve going forward is looking to pass early as he feels the defense collapse. There's a pretty advanced lob off the corner. But even just skipping it as this defender slides down creates a big advantage. But Shea's still fairly reactionary with his passing. His defense is even more interesting to me. Glance at some of his metrics, and he looks pretty good. But take a deeper dive, and things get more complex. Let's start with his footwork. Defense. It's all about intelligence and risk management. Two words, man. Defense comes down to risk management. Work which is often choppy and heavy. Lillard loses him here, and the help saves it at the rim. When he's moving laterally, he doesn't really slide, but instead turns his hips and runs, and that can get him into some weird positions, reaching with his inside hand here before a teammate saves a layup. A few years back, I talked about Clay Thompson. Uh, he, he moves great, so defense shouldn't be a liability. These are just bad decisions. Similar on-ball technique. So it's not an inherent problem, but Shea's movement patterns are a little different than Clay's, and he can end up in really weird spots, like this giant step across his body with the right leg. That's not an ideal position for a basketball defender. And he almost recovers, but ends up reaching and spinning around as his man lays it in. That's just terrible effort. A little wonky. His hips make up for it. This is like a slinky unwinding as he twists back in the other direction. And this time he stays with the ball and uses his size well. And that's the thing with Shea. He can string together really nice looking possessions. Okay, sometimes when you work out too much and you get too strong, you lose your springiness or elasticity. So he needs to work on his uh, reactionary stuff a little bit more and mentally just understand what risks he can take as an athlete and which which ones he shouldn't Sliding, a lot of these look bad his big frame and that size means he theoretically can guard bigger players like franz wagner going all out on this clutch possession holding his own and contesting well at the end but you can also find possession sga is not fast i mean he's not quick like this where after a closeout he hangs out on the bench then slowly jogs back into the play. I'm pretty sure he's on a losing sure team. That's straight up fatigue in the first quarter. <laughs> but they do often put Shea, 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 Shea on weaker scores, probably not to overtack. Why is my stuff frozen? Sorry. Some after all his heavy lifting on offense. Here's a play where he's more engaged hugged up on his man and ready to chase him around screens and he does a pretty good job and ends up back in front of him to shut him off and i'd say he's decent at getting around picks in general despite some of the issues he has at the point of attack that size gives him some value around the basket that most smaller guards don't have you have to navigate your space. So if you can navigate your space on offense, right, he can navigate his stuff on defense. If you if you jumped forward right now, right, so jump forward to take that little space away, and then you can slide, and his back will be to the slider. So if he jumps up and closes that space, he can go over that screen, but he chooses to turn and, and chase. So he goes around and takes that big foot around. That size gives him some value around the basket. Right, so it depends on how you want to guard. Don't have. Victor Oladipo has to adjust his shot here, and he'll even block a few around the rim, sliding off the corner to swat CJ McCollum. 
By the way, Shay's block numbers are up, but a lot of those are from swipe downs that are curiously being called blocks because he's generally not a big vertical presence in the paint. What is vegetable storage? Is he the next NBA superstar? He probably is because uh, who cares about defense in the NBA, right? I also get the sense that Shea understands... But he's in OKC, so unless they start winning, he's early nobody gonna care. Roll man here, then immediately X's out to the top in textbook fashion. This play made me laugh a bit. As the Thunder are recovering, Josh Giddy tells a teammate he's supposed to pick up the big man. They start arguing about it, so Shea just picks up the threat, but he's a little too small to stop it. At the same time, he <laughs> has a bad also team has these right spacey moments out there where he's ball watching and completely loses track of his man. On this play, he's actually processing a ton of weak side action, but that leaves his mark unguarded under the hoop. These little lapses can also hurt him on closeouts. He's positioned need a leader. closer to the ball here, but he's not really ready to recover. They need a vocal leader on the team or a better coach. Leads to a breakdown. And sometimes this or more practice time weaknesses taking a weird angle on this one and a huge step toward the ball which opens up a driving lane to the right and a big dunk i do wonder how many of these defensive lapses are from fatigue or even disengagement he doesn't seem to have a high motor on that end but he also has the tools and i think the general feel to be a positive defender despite any athletic shortcomings Impact Metrics view Shea as a strong all-star right now because even with that mm. leaky defense, he's one of the better offensive weapons in the league with that nice floor-raising package. My biggest question with him is what he'd look like on a better team next to other ball-dominant weapons where everything doesn't revolve around his dribble. Put him with other ball-dominant weapons. Floor. It'd be a terrible he's idea. somewhat idle, better team next to other ball-dominant weapons where everything doesn't revolve around his dribble game in the middle of the floor. He's somewhat idle away from the ball right now, but I think he could be perfectly fine as a cutter. He's actually been a good wide open three point shooter over the last few seasons. And even if he's a bit deliberate at times, he can certainly attack an advantage created by a teammate with those penetration skills. So, even if he wouldn't average 31 a game on a higher quality offense, I still think he'd bring a lot of attacking value to better teams. And just maybe that could free up some energy to help his defense. Either way, it's been awesome to watch him continue to grow over the last few seasons. And I view Shea Gilgis Alexander as a strong all-star or even borderline all NBA player right now. All NBA, probably not. Um, all star for sure. He needs better passers around him because if he's going to be a scorer, he's wasting too much energy uh, doing it all by himself. He can score. He obviously needs to improve his defense, but the um, the leadership is it looks like it's kind of lacking. If you want to be the best player or superstar, you got to take on all the burden of being the superstar, and so it all rests on him if they uh, win or lose, good or bad. SGA. <laughs> I like him offensively, obviously. Um, he needs to work on his uh, three-point shooting and uh, get a ton of tape if he wants to uh, become a better passer. Until next video, take 14 minutes, 24 seconds, or 1% of your day to get better. Peace.